Eileen Miles is a celebrated author of nearly two dozen books of poetry, fiction, nonfiction, plays, and performance pieces, including Pathetic Literature, For Now, Chelsea Girls, I Must Be Living Twice, The Irony of the Leash, and Afterglow, a dog memoir. Their long list of honors includes a Guggenheim Fellowship in nonfiction, election to the American Academy of Arts and Letters, the Clark Prize for Excellence in Art Writing, and an Andy Warhol Creative Capital Arts Writers Grant. They join us this evening with a new collection titled A Working Life. Please join me in welcoming Eileen Miles back to the Free Library. Hi, thank you for being here. I see people I know already. It's pretty exciting. Um, I was told there's a lip here. It's a dangerous lip to not stumble on. So it's going really well. <laughs> it's like, um, so this book is called um, A Working Life. And so it's really, it's really not about labor. It's more like, um, like architects making a plan for something. And they build like a little model, like a working model thing. So I think, um, you know, when I, was, when I was in my 20s and I came to New York, um, I had this amazing experience of time. Like, it felt like there was, like, all the time in the world, and nobody wanted my time, and it was really great, and it was a really good thing to write poetry in, you know? And that was in the 70s, and I feel like I've sort of ever since been wanting my 70s back, because it was, it was so much, it was just lush, you know? And, um, and so I think a couple of years ago, there was this condition, you probably experienced it too, where suddenly time got really weird. And when you, you thought you were going to be someplace else, and in fact, you were home, you know, and you, and so um, in that, in that I was in, I was in Texas when that happened. And I thought I was going to this great place and that great place. And suddenly I was, I was in Texas and I, I have a house there and um, my dog mostly lives there in my house, you know? And when I would go away, friends of mine would live in the house. Everybody lived in the house more than me. And suddenly it was March and I was really living in the house. And I was there for the, like a straight shot of like five months. And I just got like, I got to see like nature change and um, kind of, um, and time passed really, really slowly. And so it was cool. I was like, I was back in this excess and I found, I was working on a novel and the way when I work on prose, usually I, have like a surge and then um, and then I go see somebody you know but like that wasn't happening and so I would just have a surge and then it would sort of splatter and so I couldn't I couldn't really work on my novel but poetry was just like every time I turned my head there was like a poem like every single thing had had you know it was like this kind of weird blossoming of poetry and so I think I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one that would you know I got sick people got sick people died but there was also this amazing thing that we got that was just, so I felt like I got the thing I had always wanted and I and I felt like um, I felt like I had gone full circle because I had not um, I had not written this book before but I felt like I wrote it again you know like I felt like I was that person um, in a different part of their life having the same experience and so so I kept there's a weird shape on the cover that's like a like a lop, weird triangle and what it it's one of those stand up folders you get at um, Staples you know like and so I was throwing my poems in there for a couple of years and and um, and I think I scrawled a working life on the outside I thought haha you know and then I suddenly realized that was the name of the book so that's how, that's how we got here. <laughs> So many things happen in it, but one thing that happens is there's some there's some love, there's a relationship. There's, so there's there's like love poems, and then there's breakup poems. And so then when the book was coming out, I sort of thought, um, oh God, is there, are there like too many poems about my ex? And I felt shame. So I so I counted, and it's it's thirty percent, which is not bad, <laughs> right? I was like, that, cool, that's cool. Though so weirdly, the book I had before this book um, was pathetic literature, and at some point I thought, well, how many people are alive and how many people are dead in this book? And 30% were dead. So I feel like it's just watch for 30% in the world. I feel like if you're thinking about anything, someplace in particular, there's 30% of it. Um, so this is um, called First Poem. 
Every experience of being and day awakens me to the difficulty. I change my socks, I see my feet. You don't so much mind my flaws, I think, at the world when I go out. Women in chairs and couch want to both a tender dog and actual tears. Today it snows. We go live. So that was like a first bite. This is called Friday Night. What is this, like actually Tuesday? I don't think I can live without taking pictures. The peach second sun made a move on the right. No clouds shifted and realistic terms made that melon bright. But what about the singular spray of leaves that made me think of sight? Hold that rhyme. No, see, an open space and a hook, a beckoning space that shakes when there's wind. What's the hot but an emptiness in your stomach, a hole in your head, a foot on the bed? You happy? You made me happy, non-understandable us like nature, unknown, all fronds, all all silence, sound, pulling the trigger always. At some point, if you want to make those kind of poet sounds, like, huh, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally down for it, you know? This. So, this one's called In You, and it's really just wet things in the sink. I feel very protective of wood. If it's living, you can rain on it, but in the sink it rots, so love it like a baby, worship the tree. Love the light bulb in many colors, the blonde for her brightness. Forgive me for the obvious, my love deep and translucent, troubled. The candle, love the candle for its powerful tongue. The dog for his breath, whatever sex. Politeness brings me much. I plan for your death. Mine is the end of the poem. It must be long to direct, to to multiply, steam and explode. Love the fork, its tines are how I want to be invaluable. Silly name. Love Texas like a dog in a hat. If you look at a map, Texas totally looks like a dog in a hat. (laughs) This makes my poetry rise. Replace it with heat. Keel towards me, please. Be present. I wrote on you. I write with you. I sleep on you. Hold my love. Steam my flight. Bury me deep. I am one of you, loving you well, and the shame that brought us here. I write a big apology in one lifetime. I do little open-ended at my best. Thank you for your time for this long wedding. Who's with a T, not a D? Or is this like that? Um, and this is called, I'm totally glad you like that. It was, it was, I'm going to keep reading to you, whoever you are, laughing person. This is, this is called Reed, and there's a poet named Justin Reed who got the um, National Book Award. And I was hanging out with him just before, and I was like, you're going to get it. And he's like, no, I'm, you're going to get it. So he, I don't think he even knows I wrote this poem for, his, for him. Sk- skiers. Skiers miss the snow, and scientists notice that what they're studying is gone. Study gone. Carolyn says the mountains will be out, and Justin said I was funny. I push the Christmassy door. When I run out of my poem, I will write the poem you gave me. Enough poems, enough dogs. Making is just taking, if you know, knew, do do do. (laughs) That was a good ending, right? Okay, so this one, I I will say there's a phenomena which is um, dreams. And when I, again, when I was a younger poet, an earlier poet, well, Alice Notley was my friend, remains my friend, and and she was always writing dreams in her notebook. And I was like, I I thought dreams were just like fraudulent. It was just like, (laughs) now we're going to have the dream passage, you know. And then only like a few years ago, I started, I started waking up and writing my dreams right in my notebook, and I realized that the, the dream is like the perfect object because it's, it's, it's fleeing as you're trying to write about it. So it's like really good poetry chops, plus it's just it's a great subject. Um, so this is a dream, even though it sounds otherwise. And in fact, it begins with the metaphor, and I want you to keep that in mind. You'll see why I say this. It's called September 7th. The vagina of my life, that's the metaphor, <laughs> is, is so stretched out. I thought 
Where am I? Hundreds of my students landed in Brooklyn like we did last week, but it was another church. I saw the fear in their faces as I was climbing the gates and demanding we make the next connection. It was an old church. The congregation was various, ecstatic. Yes, that's what, this is a little crazy, lost, poor. Everyone, they needed an assignment. When do we last meet? When do we meet again? Is this just sentimental? Am I the priest? Describe the congregation. That's what I'll ask. It was a little like Kalandia. The churches were trains. They were nations, homeless. They were punishment. We seem to gather here. Describe us. That's the only hope. Why are we out? Why aren't we home? No, it's us, and I know you very well. You seem to be following me. I brought you here. What do I want? It's cityless. It's godless. It's fatherless. It's motherless. It always feels the same. Meeting at monuments, God asking for something. Maybe I lost my notebook. My computer died. I smell like fear. I didn't get any sleep. I wanted to be here. I couldn't keep watching that show. I finished the book about trees. Everything's stone in the name of God, but it's just us pointless at night. I'm not really at the helm. I can't be blamed. Did I ask you here? I just woke up like everyone in this swarm. It's my disease that I think I'm responsible, that it's a class. It's not a reading. I'm not in charge. I said, over there, think. Think, give them a purpose. Why did you come here tonight? Tell me what you see. Tell me who we are, what we want. Come back here again next week or sometime. Show me what you did. Only the shrink asked if I said this to everyone. What did I say? Am I saying it now? Is that why you're here? Tell me next week, next month, next year. I'll send a mailing tomorrow. You'll know when to come. I'll know who you are. I won't forget anyone. If it seems like I would always be there, well, it just isn't true. You know, at a certain point, you hate the theme song, but you have to go on. This is after that. This is next. What did he like? I guess everyone's asking you that now. What do I like? All of us out there at night, not even looking for God, looking for religion. Not even that. Looking at churches, meeting there, looking back to see what I want. You can make me choose. It's not that I have a purpose. It's more like I don't want you to think I don't have one. It's not that I don't have sex, don't like it. I forget where it happens. I can fix that. I can start while I travel just having a little bit with everyone the next time I see you all. I mean, this is called Lucky Kittens. There's two absolutely, I mean, they're all trans poems, but there's two absolutely trans poems, I think. Thank you. I met something cool, and I can't shake it. I want to write a poem to the new thing. Nothing more trans than taking a shit in the men's room in a hotel. Also, I had a perfect breakfast and am well. I exercised all good things. And once again, I'm flying. A world without mother is a world without meat. I'm not crying, I'm flying. Honestly, I took my mother's tear from the corner of her eye. It happened when she died. I took it on my finger and I wiped it on my jeans. The rattling of paper is an exquisite disconnect. Old fashioned, all breaks, making space, always ready for a fight. My heat is instantly shadowy, like a moving hand or sound, like no jazz at all. I mean, mother dying is a killer. It's just, you think, I, you're like, oh, I got to call her. And then suddenly she's like embedded in your consciousness every moment. It's, it's like she doesn't go away. She comes closer now that she's gone. It's very intense. Um, this is called The Trip. It's so weird. I have poems that I don't read, and somebody was like, please read the trip. And I was like, really? And now I'm compulsively reading it. I shall miss you, drinking grass like that. A creature drinks from a stream. It's time, and they feel their own trickle and warmth and wonder, what's that to know? My own hug somehow, the language slipping the moon drink twice, once in my throat and once in my eyes. It's a new year. How about it? Is sleep better than death? Is day better than night? Is love better than eternity? Are dogs better than cats? Is coffee? What is coffee? Any groaning machine better than any chirping animal? Is a child better than a building? Is an unseeing woman better than not? Is heat better than ice cold day 
bright day, better than telling the truth, is truth the ugly thing you share? Is sharing beautiful or hurtful and cruel? Does a pen have words? In any event, endless are words like bullets, tearing flesh, announcing themselves. What do they tell? Do hurtful words tell the end of something? The body always cold. The day was never new. Life is a prison. How are you? Drinking that, saying that, writing that, the puppets groan. The heating clanks, it's open to you. A box or a vista, a plate of cheese. Okay, this one, um, I was in Sweden, and I'm, and I think I, I, and I met these two people now named Daph, Daphne and Alice, and I don't think, I, it, it's, it's really weird to say this, it's like, got a boy, is there anybody Swedish here? Once in a while there's a Swedish person who'll yell it out perfectly. Yoti Bore. That, there, happen, thank you. Uh, see, it was like, it's like a Swedish pole, this poem. Okay, cool, thank you. Came home and lost tons of consciousness. For a time, I stole trays from hotels, and now I steal cups. There was this towel I really wanted. Sweden knows towels. <laughs> there was a shirt at the airport, white, sort of flocked, mine in every way except for this girth. I bought the girth a burger, and I nearly missed my plane. I ran and my heart pounded. I was not so fast. There was a man running with me. I yelled, 36, in camaraderie, but he ignored me. But then he started dropping shit. <laughs> I've been there. There's so much coffee. There's plenty of coffee. I wish someone was here. I'm becoming so sensitive, a person who has slept 10 hours. I'm like Vincent Price in anything. My soft voice whispering anything. There was a woman in my poem, no, I mean my dream, and she looked like someone I dated before. No, she felt like her, like she was going to be her, and it was an intense time in both of our lives. She was finishing something, and I was making a mountain of sleep. It was possibly crazy, and she was humoring me, but I felt our gap about to be closed. It must be true, I thought. It feels this way. The two someones about to become us, this geological drama, tons of time manifest like persons. I was slowly heaving myself forward to close the small distance, and I was struck in the dream by the fact she was anyone. And I do this, make her mine to share my coffee. It is better now, students. The coffee is good. It has become right for me in the day, and this is the relationship I wanted, the dark liquid waking me up in a stolen cup. A little Swedish, right? Was, was, um, this is okay. I got to read. This is great. This is a poem called "Library." Wah, 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 wah. I was like, so. But there is a story about this, which is that um, I, P.S. New York, uh, you know, performance space, um, was having an auction, and so some, you know, they are they ask artists for art for the auction, but they come to me, poet, and they were like, "Will you?" give us something. And I was like, I'll give somebody a poem. I can, somebody can have a poem. And they said, well, is there any particular poem? I said, well, somebody with a dog, I will write a poem for their dog, you know? And so somebody paid $5,000 for my dog poem. And I was like, okay. And so then I had to go to Chelsea to this very expensive, um, huge building and meet this woman and her two new fees um, named Penny and Paisley. And so we, we went for a walk in the neighborhood, and I figured out all their regulars, and I learned, I took notes, I learned all about their life, and then I wrote, well, then, and then I didn't write the poem, I went to Greece. And then I, I got this kind of grouchy letter, from, email from the woman saying, where's the poem? You know, and I was like, oh, I gotta write the poem. So I wrote the poem, and then I sent the poem, and I've never heard a word to this day. I was like, where did you get this poem? And I, I wrote her, I said, did you get the poem? Nothing, nothing. So this is called, this is crazy, right? It's called the library. Penny and Paisley study maps. Penny and Paisley abhor literature. Penny and Paisley wear hats. P Paisley's got a bushy foot, wavy back. Penny's very thirsty, camping over the bowl or the water like a platypus, just like that, like literature, like a library. She's a beautiful mass. She just sits there, paisley lifts her telescope at the Acropolis, at the bay. Ears are lost in her brownness, wiggle wave, huff, huff. 
Penny and Paisley at the deli. Three paradise, please. Three seasoned sausage and egg. This is really this, do- every day they would go to the <laughs> deli and get their sausage and egg rolls. On. I love ruins, says Penny. <laughs> Just get the sandwiches, says Paisley. <laughs> Remember the dead. Every mountain in Greece is named after St. Elias. Remember his Greek people here, too, probably. Is there any Greek? Pra, you Remember him, get me sandwich, day, bay. My breathing is like the chug of a train. Forward always, says Penny. Lobby in, lobby out, get me a boat. Penny and Paisley are sailing. Dusk falling on the ruins, on Shelter Island, on the sea. Penny and pa- they have a great life, these dogs. Penny and Paisley are singing as the light falls, as the sandwich warm, on the deck of the boat, as the dogs dive in and splash around, and they're turning to see what you see at sea. They sing, and the sun warms the dog, and the dog warms the egg, and the egg warms the sea, and the sea warms the day. Penny and Paisley are sailing as they're swaying down the street, and the dogs wrote a book, and the dogs went to bed, and the dogs had a day. That's just what it said. What? Thank you. Thank you. I was like, P.S. got the money. I, I did the good thing. I guess it's all good. I was like, um, okay, this is a really weird, I can follow that up. This is a very weird one, but I love it. It's called Bed Newton, which is a totally made up word, and it's sort of Dodie Bellamy ish. She has a bed something. It's like, I don't know, bed cunt or something really crazy. But, um, and, and I will only say, like, the, um, the filmmaker, Jonas Mikas, died. And he was a great independent filmmaker. And so I went to um, Wayfire in Brooklyn to a screening of all his stuff. And we got there late, and we couldn't get in. It was very frustrating. And then, the, you know, it was just a weird night. And, and also, I don't know, you don't need any of this information, but I'm just <laughs> busily ruining my poem. And then I was in Chicago, and I went to Joan Mitchell's apartment building. And that was another story, but I won't. In the q and A, I'll tell you the story if you want to know. But this is Ben Newton. Oh, and this, 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 my mother was Polish. There's a Polish movie. You don't need any of this. Okay. <laughs> Bed Newton. Was there ever such a woman in Poland or a man who brought those candles to her bed, to her bed, in film without consciousness, and there was still that tear? The cold that is making them cry all the time, all his films, were strung together tonight for three hours, completely in film, his film. The corpse of the man, Anne saw his body, very beautiful. She said the dead looked young and rested. I walked up, introduced myself, a little proud white nobody. I think a person becomes more general, a man proud to be any man in order to be feminist and not hating her death till the end, and I have more places to put things. Now she probably meant in the state of no relationship, though I saw her dash. I thought you were legit, he said, and he meant class. And she said it was cute. Joan would have liked that women were the people I most likely corrected about pronouns was something you wouldn't catch men. Each floor was like a funeral home, rolling the cadavers out daily of the rich. And they had to take the freight elevator of all the affront. Of course, he lived here. I become better, worse. He said to be more like my friends, and it finally didn't work. She didn't go to any readings anymore. She's dead like him. I went because of the poet. Poetry connection, inhale the nothing. That word, they said, make it bigger. I figured he had it in the family. In two of his films, he had one, got to be right. She said, okay, we are so famous in that poem, throw it right at the building. I love that they had sex, that's right. Throw your damn poem, bloody red scarf, just like you think, and that secret language. In here, you're like a clown that squeezing the long internal history of women emptying that song, and this is like a screen, cross-play, a strong young question. Stand up and say it, brings the inside out. Is there any translation without relationship? She said, I live right around the corner, don't kill me. And he was like a prop, rugged, handsome Polish man. He was just feeling all that time, should I shoot it? Whatever was right, into me or not, it's just not making me sad, something is, yes, ship. She would sit there on the phone being Polish for hours. It's all Polish, right? So many miles away, tears ran down her face being mum. You have me now, mother. Have a big Manhattan, mom. But she wanted a son. Right? It's sort of abstract. It was just, but I think I was still pumped from the cha-cha of the dog poem. So I could kind of write. Um, where am I going?
never even, I was like, never even even heard of these poems. <laughs> so, this is jihad. Um, this is, you know, I'm just going to continue on the mom thing. She's really out tonight. Um, so this is called Jihad, and and um, I submitted it for some poetry thing, and they were like, Jihad, I don't know if you can say that, you know? And I was like, okay, call it wolf. And so it went out as wolf initially, and then I went to my Palestinian friend, and I said, can I say Jihad? And he was like, I think it's a very beautiful word. And I said, I do too. So Jihad is back. And this is kind of a Marfa poem, if you know Marfa. Anybody here from Marfa? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is totally, this is like television. How's Brooklyn tonight? You know, it's like... <laughs> Um, jihad there was a lunar eclipse in cancer today perhaps this is the start of the latest in my new breed of very bad poems rangy, leggy is this the night of the apocalypse David's blue lights over there I don't want any language to escape me the tower against the sky and a better guy than me walking his dog my truck makes a funny twirling sound Turn the corner, who am I? At that big blaring moon, the one that stays in that reads stop sign, one red, two white, two more reds, dots, really, and the mountains are here, dark over there, invisible. My dog soigne in bed. I ask her, please. The heat here falling like a kitten in a period that's novelesque, it just holds all of this living. Are you writing a book or are you just in your house? I tweeted that and people went nuts. It was just I was, obviously everybody was just in their house. Um, the wind laughing out there, even the barcode say resembles the sky and the sea. Pat de Groot's bobbing vision, and I wish I bought you when. Mirrors stretch the light a little bit, longer, even multiply, light bulbs, a lid rolls, a reflection of power, a night of tiny things, homey moons. Will Masha tell how they did it, the boys who blew up Boston, looking for greatness, but it's just a spray of salt, lime, and thyme, the surface of a table covered with book, open ladling their knowledge to a non-reading pile of things, other books, c compared, re receipts. I don't know why electricity reminds me of my mother before the world was language, and it was only attached to her and the room wasn't everything was, so she owns the tingle now of language past. Maybe now when I stay in to be alone with my mother, new dark, dark superstar, when she's gone and the world's full of holes and this is it, I tell my love I just want to live in my hole, and it's not even language now. I love the train, her wide whine. The whole damn world is her sign. My mother or my lover... There's not enough of me, but I'm sitting here to listen, warm to be in from the cold crack, says the heat. Man, did you hear that? I was saying that I felt nothing, and now I always want to tell you of my world. You become, in your life, her recording device, her ears and nose, her recording clock. I couldn't tell her a thing. The insult was so great. She had left this thing that was mine, a suit of clothes, brain only good for recognizing the unfathomable the unfathomable sound of the earth being pounded and producing wind, or is it my voice? Okay, I got, this, is, this is called Put My House. I gotta read this. And this was also in that time of great... Um, um, timelessness. And so my then girlfriend was on the East Coast and I was in Texas and she was in New York and she kept saying, come here. And I was like, no. Um, <laughs> and so I, I wrote, this is sort of a mediating poem. I was like, look, we can do this, you know. <laughs> Put my house inside the boat. Can we do that? Put my dog inside of your dog. Put these birds inside of yours. Put my ocean, put your ocean all over my mountains. Put my mountains in there. Put my dog in yours. My dog walk is safe inside your dog walk. Let me eat inside you. Let me eat your food. Let me eat your house. Put your house inside my dog. Put your dog on my boat. Naturalize. 
Put my heart in yours. Put my mouth on your mouth. Put my hair in yours. Let me breathe inside you. Let me smell your guts. Put your boat in my eye. Let me eat your friends. Put these, and they've been in the audience sometimes. I was thinking, you were among the people I was going to eat. Um, <laughs> put these hours inside your hours. Eat this bird cheap. Eat my dog's foot. Eat that ocean. Run to him or the o ocean. Run to them. Hear these birds cheap. Fly to me. Eat my foot. Put my house inside yours, in your mind, think me fly. This fly me home, love me now. Forget your phone, eat my heart, run to him, or the o o shun. Tweet, 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 dog growl, cluck, click. Put my house right in there. Yeah, that's me looking out the window. Look at me, bark, bark, bark. Put your heart inside that bark. I was like, yeah, bro, yeah, you're great. Thank you. Um, uh, I keep seeing sack. I was like, sack. I never wrote a poem called sack. Why would I write a poem? I was <laughs> like, right? I'm like, what's that? But it's, it's, it's sacrament. Um, it's called the sacrament and the trains coming today, different from yesterday. There still is that slight breeze. Maya is the special agent in charge of casinos on get-go, not the owner of Ozark, who did not respond to my letter, peeing around the dumpster, peculiar peculiar slime and cat trap, a cup of time we get to give as an amend to somebody else not burning this morning, not somebody else, screwed it up, to somebody else not burning in this morning sun today, I'm starving. You would have felt slightly different if I didn't screw it up. <laughs> so, okay, this is, this is another dream poem. And this one, the, um, I, when I gave the manuscript to the publisher, they were like, is, is that really the right title? It's Monday shit. I was like, it's absolutely the title. Um, but this is completely a dream poem. This is, yeah, this is completely that. Um, I don't know if I'm knowing something or falling apart. I put my two feet together, it's Monday. Put the water on. I was dropping a man off, a, a dark-haired friend. I was parked in the middle of the plaza. I can't stay here. I went inside a little. I gotta go, and I went up there over the lumpy hills. The store where the women worked, my friends, an old guitar store. Everything's different now because of the pandemic. I want to go to that, I think. Can I put my bike behind the counter or up there? No, because we're moving. I see plenty of room. Next, I'm all involved with them, the kids, and they're playing outside. I'm in the apartment somehow and everyone's gone, like I woke. I could have put my bicycle anywhere. It's morning. I call the children like it's morning. Where did this shit come from? And I found the morning coffee, and, and this is a miracle. I just called them, and they came in like dogs. I dreamed this world. That's it. Does it work this way? Working, dreaming, having a life, making and dying. Why did I die to dream this? And everyone that knows me or something, somewhere or some while, I know you once in a while. I truly forgot about him. I didn't know he was going to do that. Everybody's not in a dream but me or we find each other here. I don't know their fucking names, but I found their children. I was first. I'm waking here. It's perfect. Everything. Because coffee's like music. I thought about quitting in the future for the better orgasm. I read that. Did it once in the 80s. We were camping and shit and whoa. Waking from that dream into this, but my cave, my hovel, afraid to put it in a suitcase, will my dreaming come? The feeling of flowing with you. But you have seven stories and I have three, possibly three, one flooded with a baby. Do I know? All I know is this kid. I'm just thinking about what you're getting into as I'm making my day. How did it end this time? Feeding the yellow dog. I was looking for a parking place and it was my dyke, my children. And I didn't know anyone's names. Is this the story that holds the future, or this is the day so marvelous, pouring some of it over and over there? I think it's perfect. In me, this prophecy right here, now it holds. Thank you for the snap. Um, a few more, a couple more. I think we're kind of cool, 15. Mm. Um. Oh, yeah, well. 
This is called Memorial Day. Cat jumps into a dumpster shopping. <laughs> There's a whole haiku thing going on. That I, um, this is, this is. Um, t- two, in the, in the um, pandemic, I was, um, I did get COVID. And, um, and weirdly, the night before, I was with my then girlfriend who was like, you don't like True Blood, do you? And I was like, no, I'm not into vampires at all. And she was like, it's really good. You should watch it. And I said, I don't want to watch it. And she was like, come on, just one episode. And I was like, okay. So I sat down. And watched, I was like, this is incredible. I love it, you know? <laughs> and the next day, I had COVID. And so <laughs> for 10 days, I watched every, all six seasons of True Blood and became completely about vampires, which I continue to be. And so they, they, I, have a, I have a bunch of vampire poems in this book, but, and they became, so the, I'll read a couple. This is, but this one is called The Park. Um, the politicians are like actors and real estate investment groups are like vampires. Politicians think they have to let bite them or they won't get any work. The rest of us are humans living around the show. Squirrels are squirrels. Birds are birds. Our park is a giant stage we thought was real because we walked there every day. It is a set that Robert Moses built so he could run his highway alongside it. My dog knows the story. You know the story. Everyone knows the story. The vampires are building a giant boat on top of our park in order to save it. It will take them about 10 years. The waters will rise. The children will be old. I will be dead. The vampires will be rich. The politicians will have these tiny vials of blood all lined up on their shelves from the years they were in that play. And this one is a, another vampire poem, and this is for the people who really know True Blood. Yes. I feel, okay, you're feeling, okay. It's called Home in Our Time. I thought I heard cows moaning, but it was my dog's breathing. My cold feet, I got the shot. She asks him if he warmed the blood as if it were milk, and she was his kid, and he did. Bill Compton has Bill Clinton's voice. You must have noticed this. His sweater is not black, it's burgundy, the color of blood floating through a tube. I sold mine at a storefront near the Strand in the 70s on a fake leather couch. I lied near a man who was a regular. They told me to keep pumping my hands. I nearly passed out to see my outsides passing through a tube. I was told to never come back, and now I am a vampire. How is that true? Um, I want to read, this is because there's, there's a color connection to this poem here. I'm going to read two or three more. Um, this is called Two Things. And it's got a very weird um, epigraph, which won't make any sense. It's April 9th. It's Ireland first, and that's why I must read Anna Burns' Milkman before Gillian Rose. Okay. So it's called Two Things. The ruby pajamas that I bought in Cavan, the rocky place my family came from, and that were in Ireland. The rocky place my family came from, and that's why they drank. It was cozy, and then it seemed sad to wear pajama bottoms in top, ruby or maroon, dark red. So I got rid of the top, and that felt a little freer, more tossed when I slept. But I came around eventually to wanting the whole thing, not fancy at all, not sad. I bought them in a men's shop. The guy was respectful and offered a small. It's the absolute fucking fact. And tonight, by complete accident, I'm wearing a ruby t-shirt, one of my favorite. I was wearing black earlier, everyone was. It was dark in the rain. So when I got home, I put on this different shirt and I felt honestly forced by these conditions, the red t-shirt and the dark maroon pajama bottoms from Ireland to keep to myself here where it's all right in all this dark red tonight and I remember all the bright smiling we were doing on the phone earlier today and I liked it so much I mean this is another subject but sometimes you just have to work can I get away with anything alone in bed and my clothes match really I think it works um and here we go two a tiny okay this one I they have to read this this is and I continued, to, this is sort of about a poem who's a huge winner of awards, and it's not me. 
And I continue to this, it's nice around here, we got this and that. Did I get this because it's cold? It'd be over fast. I don't know what they expect me to think of with these little green crowns mixed in with the food. It's supposed to be nice like greens in with flowers, but these are not flowers, these are fish, dead fish. Not for too long, I hope, and they swam past green things in their youth yesterday. I'm well aware of the horror of the world. The silence is not worse. I'm thinking of her all of a sudden with this chewy fish in my mouth. In a way, it must be terrible to win now. She is the cherry of everyone's defeat. She is the cherry. Mysteriously, I ate the old fish, and she is the cherry. Salute. I had never said salute before in my life. I was like, that's really great. Okay, so here we are at the very... I kept the mask on because I thought I looked good. This restaurant really needs a candle, and like it heard me, a plane passed overhead. Another haiku. And now, I think this is, the, I think this is it. This is the last, this is totally right. The last poem is called Mice. Or I could read Mice and Diet Coke. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Like I, Diet Coke, then Mice. Diet Coke says, recycle me. I took the dog on the subway today, and today I have an alarm on my phone called Joan Mitchell. And later t on tonight, I said I'd be joning. This dog sees everything on Second Ave. Not far historically from where, this is a good position right here, not far historically from where Robert Harms met Joan Mitchell in the apartment of Joe Lesseur right over there. I think of buildings collapsing. I'm having a slice nearby. At the party, everyone's laughing. I say I'm boning Joan tonight. I'm boning up on Joan Mitchell. For the famous woman artist podcast, Honey badly wants a bite. That's my dog. Honey badly wants a bite. The light just changed. It's bright. The kind of Stefan Grappelli violin playing while bicycles pass. Matthew said I would have sobbed. The end was so good if I had authentic feelings. We laugh. I just spent an hour zooming with my shrink. The parade of exes in Provincetown. The man in the orange cap walking away. I would cry if I wasn't so damn joyous. He's lowering the awning of pizza shop, but these feelings just won't go away. And so, mice. Mice, the finale. Okay. They see a cluster of small rubber ducks and scraps of broken shells and think, I'll sit there. <laughs> we describe them as brazen when they run through what actually is their home. So I began to kill them because I'm better than them. <laughs> one was seen running into the bathroom, my bathroom. And a small, frail one was found dead right on the floor, and the poison is working, and I feel bad. Because, in fact, I like living with them. They're part of my life, they're little shits, everywhere, and I have killed their child. They're unclean, anyone would say. Isn't it why I must kill them? But I'm unclean, too. Isn't that why they're here? <laughs> and I, ge I generally have guests who say, this place is so small. They look around, and I feel shame. And I look around usually right after a trip or in a couple of days and it is small. But not to them. They think it's huge, perfect. And that is a friend. <laughs> and why don't I keep them around? Come back, come back. And I know you will. Uh, thank you. Hi, oh, hi, Eileen. Hey. Um, great reading. Thank nice, you. Nice to see you. Um, <laughs> um, you. You mentioned that dreams are like good poetry chops because they kind of recede as you're trying to write them down. Right, and that right. made me think instantly about Elizabeth Bishop. Uh -huh. And do you ever think about Elizabeth Bishop? I mean, not as much as people want me to. I don't want you to. No, no, <laughs> that's not, it's not, yeah. It's I like went a, to her house a, in Key West last winter and that was kind of amazing. Oh, I saw oh, really? there was a bathtub and I thought Elizabeth Bishop took baths in this tub. It was incredible. I like her poems. They're great. I mean, I think that, like, so I just haven't had a real moment of obsessed with Elizabeth Bishop in my life. And I do feel, unfortunately, I do feel like she is the woman that gay men really like. Like, sure. she sure. somehow is okay. You know? Yeah. And I was like, what is that about? You know? Yeah. Um, but I do, I mean, I think she's great. I mean, I have nothing, no, not taking anything away from her yeah. at all. But you well, think, you love her, right? That's right. <laughs> And I, I think I know that I'm very excited. I probably would go backwards. I mean, I've read the poems, that, you know, I've talked, I mean, like the sonnet, the one, um, 
And if in the backwards world, the one... Oh, the, Into the World Inverted, that one? Yes, it's a, a sonnet. It's called well, Insomnia. Yeah, Insomnia. It's a perfect sonnet, and it just is, has a heartbreaking end. You have to go find it tonight. Just search it, you know. I, it would be cool if I could recite it, but I can't. I bet you can. No. No, okay. <laughs> So just that just that one line with the inverted. Yeah, and we don't want to ruin the end, so we can't give away the end, which no. is perfect. No. So anyway, she's cool. she nailed it with that one. I always use that. Thank but you. I, I just want to go to the prose for. I feel like uh, I, I I have a feeling that the prose will kill me and then, and it'll push me backwards into the poems, at some point in my life. That that might be true. My fav my one of the best things I think that's ever been recorded is Bishop reading her memoir of Marianne Moore at the 92nd Street Y, huh. like sh shortly before she died. Like right. she's very old, she's like very like shy and nervous, but then she kind of gets into it. Right, and right. She's, she's like remembering, or she's right, she's talking about meeting Marianne Moore huh. in like, I don't know, the 30s or the, she was a college student and right. she met Moore who was like older and very suspicious. Huh. and. Oh, cool. Anyway. Well, I will, we're so all, we're going to totally yeah, all look for this, this video. No, it's on YouTube, yeah. Yes, yeah, of course. Recommend yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any, um, any other thoughts? This guy, what about um, Oliver Wendell Holmes? Oh. I'm, I wasn't being mean. I was kind of funny. I was like... <laughs> so I have two questions. Was he, I don't know if he was a poet. Was he a, a Supreme Court justice? Or, okay. <laughs> It's not even a poet. He has three names. At a certain point in history, poets all had three names. Um, two questions. Which poets do you, in fact, look to or read? Or And the other is, I want to hear the Joan Mitchell story in Chicago. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, there's, all, there's so many poets that, that, I mean, you know, for a long time, I mean, now I, I love, actually, I'm reading Bernadette Mayer's last book right now, and it's blowing me away. She's so good. She's really good, she is, and she's always surprisingly good because she's sort of dumb and awkward and very class-based, and then she has a perfect ear. So there's a yellow book that came out from New Directions that I think is absolutely perfect, and there's a poem about me in there, too. So I'll just call Star Wars, so if you buy the book, check it out. Um, but, you know, and Jimmy Schuyler, John Wieners are two of my favorites. Judy Grant, we're doing an event, like my the Pathetic Literature Anthology, which I edited, is on... May 28th, we're reading the whole fucking thing. It's like 600 pages, which would be 22 hours. But what we're doing, we have all of St. Mark's Church. We're using all the spaces. So we're simultaneously having four or five readings at the same time. So it'll be five or six hours. And Judy Grant is coming to read A Woman is Talking to Death, which if this doesn't, I mean, if this doesn't mean anything to you, go look at this poem because it's one of the great masterpieces of contemporary literature. Um, so she, I mean, that poem... One, I mean, I often had a thing with, like, it's one poem of a person. I mean, it's, I know it's really bad, but I get obsessed with a poem. Like, Luce, Lucille Clifton has that poem called Motherhood. Um, and I'm like, again and again and again, I read that poem. John Wiener's The Hotel Wentley Poems, you know. But um, I'm reading um, Brenda Shaughnessy's new book. is really great, you know. I'm really liking that. I can't, I can't remember what it's called. And Conrad, C.A. Conrad is always, like, family, you know. Um, Ariana Rhine's family, you know, um, as example, forever, you know. So those are some of my people. You had a second question? Joan oh, Joan Mitchell. No, all it was was just that I, so I was writing, there was a big Joan Mitchell retrospective um, in Paris and Baltimore and all over the place. And, um, and so I was writing an essay for it. And what I was doing, I, I got all her addresses in New York and I went to all of her former apartments and looked at them and stuff. And I then was coming to, to Chicago and I, I found out the address of her childhood um, apartment building. And her family was really wealthy, so it was an amazing building facing the, whatever lake is next to Chicago. Um, <laughs> I know, I never get that stuff straight. And, um, and so I, th there was an apartment for sale in the building, and so I got in touch with the agent and, and went, into, you know, went into an apartment that maybe wasn't hers, but it could have been hers, you know, it was more or less. And so then I became obsessed with the building, so I went up and down. And like every, these people were so wealthy, they all had floor-throughs, you know? And each, each front door was really ornate in its own little style. They, they looked like funeral homes, most of them. But it was, I was just obsessed, and I, want, I stopped at every floor, which turned out really fucked over the real estate agent, who, because these are really wealthy people, and it was the only elevator. 
And I'm like having all this fun. So they all, they all had to use the freight elevator. So he was really mad, and he was like, I thought you were legit. And I was very, so that's the, that's the John Mitchell story. Yeah, yeah. It's humiliated. Not, I mean, not really. I got what I wanted, but the price was my pride. Um, I'm thinking about that dog poem that the, she never wrote you back. Never um, wrote me back. I'm thinking about what it is to write a $5,000 poem. And what is that like for you? Like when you're offered well, a large sum in, to write a poem, does that change your relationship with making it, with just engaging with the absurdity of that situation? I think if it happened a lot, it would. Yeah. <laughs> well, but for one thing, I didn't know that that's what I, I was writing the poem because I had this, you know, responsibility to, to PS New York, but I hadn't asked yet how much they got for the poem. So I was, you know, so it didn't, it didn't affect, it was just that I did have to write it and that was fun. And another time I had to write a poem, I mean, like, it happens more and more, like a, um, an art gallery that I um, write catalog essays for sometimes. Um, there was an artist whose work I really like, who really likes poetry, and they were like, could you write 20 poems for this catalog? And I was like, that, you know, they had no idea because to them, you know, like an, often if they want an essay, they'll ask for like 5,000 words, right? So 20 poems, they're like little, right? So they think 20 poems, that's less than 5,000 words. We're giving this person a real deal. You know, but I was like, you have no idea, you know, and then I, I mean, so, so then I had to make up a machinic way to do it, which was the sonnet, you know, like I, I, I printed out all the person's um, paintings and I just spread them all over the floor and I had an hour and a half because I was going to go to see Harry Styles <laughs> alone, alone, because nobody in New York was stupid enough to pay the money I was paying. But this, I just had this impulse because it's more like it's not even the music. It's just his style is so great. I'm always wanting a haircut and thinking I want what he has, you know, and it never looks like that when I get the haircut. But um, and so I just thought I'm going to write the whole fucking thing before I go out to Harry Styles. So then I so I wrote son, like 21 sonnets in an hour and a half. And that was really fun. So I just felt like money is not the, you know, it's more like the requirement of writing a poem. It's like being back in a poetry workshop, which may or may not produce good poems, you know. But sometimes, I mean, so I think to me, money is not the issue because sometimes a lot of money could produce a great poem. And then the next time it would pr produce a crap poem. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's moot. moot. Money is moot. Hi. Hey. Uh, what would Honey think of um, Penny and Paisley? What must Honey think yeah, of? Yeah, yeah. If they met, what would be going through her head? Oh, I mean, it could, well, I don't know. They're, they're big and kind of soft and playful. Hard to, and Honey can be an asshole. You know, Honey's just a little unpredictable because she was a stray in the Bronx for two years. So it's just like she's, she has dog friends and she's very, you know, loves them. But even with them, she can kind of act out, you know. So I don't, I really don't know. I mean, I think she, though, would have been weirded out by rich dogs that are having a, a poem written for them. <laughs> I think they would bring out some class rage in the street dog, you know. But, but she's like, she is, so, I mean, if I haven't done a search, I've done, it's really fun when you have a book. Like I've had, a, when I had my selected poems, I did a search for how many times the word pussy was in it. I thought, this is, I can't remember, it was crazy, it was like 37 or something. I thought, this is definitely unique in American publishing, you know? And so I haven't done the, the honey search, but I bet it's in this book a lot. So she has nothing to complain about. But thank you for thinking about her. You have a dog, right? Um, not yet, uh, three months I will. Oh, cool. Oh. What are your prose influences? Oh, um, well, the, it's always um, Violette Leduc, numero uno. Do you know her? She wrote a book called La Batarde. And so in the 50s and 60s, when, um, when um, Jean-Paul Sartre had Genet as the artist hero, um, Simone de Beauvoir had, um, had Violette Leduc. And so she just wrote this amazing book and it's 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 memoir ish it's fiction ish it's poetry ish and it's it's you know it's very it's bisexual it's like she's gay she has like great 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 sex great you know um boarding school sex and and for me because when i was really trying to figure out how to write prose and i just there was something about her twittering in between poetry and prose that was so important for me you know henry miller for some henry miller tropic of capricorn 
I read it when I was 23, and I was like, wow. It didn't, it didn't trigger um, writing, but it triggered me wanting to write because he was like, he was like working class and he was complaining. Like he started off like I didn't ask to be born. And I thought, oh, I thought only rich kids said that, you know? <laughs> so there was a, a complaint and it gave me, both of them, actually both of them are huge complainers. And I, when I realized that I, compl I could complain, that helped me towards prose, you know? Nice. Um, and so in full transparency, I've only read of yours, Inferno, your poet's novel, um, this is a good, a really good place to start. It's a really amazing book. Uh, Thank you. And it came into my life at like sort of a very... I'm so glad we saved you for the last. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, and what, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, I'm being um, a jerk. It came into my life at sort of a very crucial time. I had just kind of, I had decided to be a lesbian as kind of a, a choice for joy and survival. It's um, amazing. And something that really fascinated me about this book, other than that it was like, it was about your 20s in New York and just just you being kind of all over the place, which was awesome. Um, uh, but it really inspired me how you built an amazing art practice from being so sort of tornado-like, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, um, and you actually have a, a quote about it that I'd like to just read and then ask you my question. Okay. <laughs> um, you're saying everything was pathetic and it wouldn't stop. I'm a mess and I couldn't and I could show how that looked. I resigned myself to continuous movement like I'm drawing. Like if there is a form it exists independent of me or else I'm complicit in it. I'm wandering in it, underlining, chasing horses or changing horses all the time and each decision left a mark. And so you're kind of just this tornado of action which is amazing and an amazing way to think about making art. And I guess just with that in mind, I would like to ask you if you would have any advice for your 20s self or uh -huh. just young people here who are maybe feeling some kind of pessimism about having to be one thing. Having to be one thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you totally don't have to be one thing. <laughs> no, I mean, in fact, I don't know how it's possible to be one thing. You know, it's sort of like one thing is like somebody else's perspective on you, who, who you should get away from. I think, you know, I mean, I think it's, yeah, yeah, I don't think, it, I think it's just not, in the same, in, same way with gender, you know, there's absolutely, it's not that, we, we know, there, it's not that there are two genders or 30 genders, there's as many genders as there are people on the planet, you know, it's, it's that, it's that diffuse gender and sexuality, and I think writing is, is like the act of consciousness, and consciousness is endlessly unique and complex and, and familiar and recognizable and, um, you know, so, but I, I just simply think that if, if, if I were young, and I was young, I think the thing, thing is to, to really just contrive to write a lot and not worry about quality. Just produce. I think excess is the way to fly. Because I think there are poets, I mean, I do think that's part of why I've been slower to get to Elizabeth Bishop, because I think she's precise. She's a perfectionist. She would like write a poem and then sit on it for like two years or something, or 16 years or something. Like, and I, I have poems like that that I return to and later on I'm somebody else and somebody else can edit the poem. But, but in general, I think poets are the types that where they, some people write very little and they fix and fix, and then other people write a lot, and then out of that they figure out which percentage, 30% or 3% are good, and then you, you share that part of the work, but you always write more than, than you need to reveal, you know? So I think, for me, the idea of being productive as a young person is really good, like absolutely not, you know, like really, lowering your standards, raising your productivity. You know, that's my advice. Just make a lot. Make, and write badly and um, fearlessly, you know. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks.